Okay, time to read again. The Losers Club by Andrew Clements. We are on chapter 10, so please turn to page 50. The chapter name is Sign. Nina was still smiling as she shrugged off her backpack and dropped it onto the table. She pointed and said, nice sign. Yeah, Alex said, I really like it. Mr. Wilner did the lettering. I think he must have taken a course or something to learn how to make his writing look that good. And I want to ask her about that sometime. What kind, about what kind of markers he uses? And if there's a name for that style of lettering? And if the kind of paper makes a difference and, and stuff. Alex stopped talking. His hands were cold and clammy. He felt like he'd just said way, way too much about the stupid sign. Nina sat down, kitty corner from him, and Alec noticed that she looked almost the same as yesterday, except her t-shirt was dark green. She was definitely in his language arts class. He had seen her there this morning, but he hadn't tried to talk to her. He had also spotted her during lunch, sitting alone, reading. And he noticed that since lunch, she had pulled her hair back into a short ponytail. One sleeve of a pale blue sweatshirt was sticking out of her backpack probably the same sweatshirt she'd been using as a back pillow when he had talked to her yesterday at the origami table. I wasn't sure they'd really let us start a club with that name, she said, nodding at the sign, on account of how it sounds. Alec could, still could hardly believe he'd been brave enough to walk over and talk to Nina yesterday. Even now, it felt odd. He'd already said more to her than he'd said to any other girl he could think of, not counting his mom. And he definitely did not count his mom as a girl. He wanted to keep the conversation going. He had to gulp a few times, but more words came. What do you mean, how the name sounds, he asked. She tilted her head. It sounds sort of sarcastic, or sort of tough, like we're a gang of thieves or a motorcycle club or something. Oh, right, Alex said, kind of like the greasers and the outsiders. Her face lit up. Exactly, I loved that book. Alec nodded, me too, and her other books are just as good. She's amazing. Nina stared at him. She? S.E. Hinton is a woman? Yeah, well, yeah, said Alec. Oh, Nina said, then quickly added, I mean, there's no reason a girl couldn't write about tough guys and motorcycles and fights and stuff. I think I could. Alec didn't know what to say. He wanted to add that S.E. Hinton had written that first book when she was still a teenager, but he didn't want Nina to think that he thought he was some kind of know-it-all. And he didn't want to try to change the subject all of a sudden and start blabbing about something else. She was the one who'd said she didn't want to be in a regular book club with a bunch of talking. Nina ended the awkward pause herself. Anyway, like I said, it's a nice sign. And sitting here is way better than hearing kids talk about folding paper all afternoon. Then she zipped her bag open, pulled out a book, and began reading. Alec couldn't see the title, but he noticed that it was a paperback which made him start thinking. So it's not wrinkle in, a wrinkle in time because that one was a hardcover, which means she's a really fast reader because she must have finished the whole rest of that book last night. But maybe she reads several different books at the same time. Alec made himself stop. He shifted position so he faced away from Nina and opened up his book. He was almost to chapter seven now, which had a battle scene he loved. He always got his heart thumping and made his hands feel cold and sweaty at the same time, which pretty much described how it felt to try talking to a girl, except reading felt safer. Chapter 11, Honorable. 15 minutes later, Alec was standing shoulder to shoulder with a band of warriors out in front of a castle. Deep inside the story, he felt like he was right next to Taryn, with the harsh clang of steel on steel ringing in his ears. Then, as Taryn dodged spears and arrows, something struck Alec's foot in real life. Whoa! He jerked both legs upward and his knees thumped the table, which made Nina jump. Oh! Alec blinked in confusion and a voice said, Hey there, loser. I've got to get that ball. It was Kent smirking. Alec looked down and saw a red kickball under the table. He smiled. No problem, champ. Help yourself. Then Kent noticed Nina. Oh, hey, how are you? Nina closed her book and turned sideways to look at him. Kent smiled at her and straightened up, pushing his hair back off his forehead. Didn't see you much there at the end of summer, he smiled again. He looked tall and strong, and Alec decided he probably would have been good at using a sword and a shield in a battle. Nina said, we were away. 
Alec was no expert, but he was pretty sure Kent was interested in Nina as a girl. Alec, uh, and even though Nina didn't smile back, the way she didn't smile made Alec think she was also interested in Kent as a boy. Alec had noticed something a long time ago, way back in fourth grade. Kent had girl skills. He knew how to talk to them, and even more amazing, he seemed to know how to make girls want to talk to him. The guy was fearless. Kent turned and gave Alec a big smile. You know, if you'd told me that she was going to be in your club, I would have signed up right away. Top of the next page. Totally calm, totally at ease, except his smile looked totally fake to Alec. Alec wanted to roll his eyes and say something sarcastic, but he controlled his face and managed to look pleasant. Nina said to Kent, what makes you think I would have joined this club if I'd found out that you were in it? And her smile looked totally real to Alec. The kids over the kickball game started yelling, so Kent ducked, ducked down, grabbed the ball, and said, gotta go win a game. See you later, losers. But when he said losers, it didn't sound the way it had a minute ago. This time, the word didn't have any bite. Kent ran back to his game with a huge burst of speed. Alec knew that was cheap show-off stuff, and he guessed that Nina knew it too, but she seemed to enjoy it anyway. Before she could start reading again, he gulped and said, so, I guess you already know Kent. She nodded. We moved here around the middle of July and he lives about five blocks away. He was riding by on his bike and he saw my brother Richie playing basketball. He's in seventh grade. So Kent stopped by to play and then he kept coming over. He's good at basketball. Alex said, yeah, Kent's great at sports. I've known him since preschool. My house is close to his and we were pretty good friends for a while, mostly during the summers. But not now? She seemed interested. No, not much, Alex said. I know what you mean, she said. I had friends like that at my old school. Of course, now I'm starting all over again. Back to zero friends. Alec glanced down at the table. He could see the title of her book now, Island of the Blue Dolphins. Alec remembered reading it during third grade. The whole story flashed before his eye, mind, and he pictured that girl stuck alone on an island for years and years learning how to survive, and it was based on a true story. He decided his guess about Nina being a fast reader was correct. But there was something else about that particular book. Nina's face had looked especially sad then, right after she'd said zero friends. And he wondered if books worked like that for her, the way they did for him. Because whenever he was reading a story, it tried to spill over into his life. Or maybe it was the other way around that his own life spilled into the thoughts and actions of characters. She was still looking at Alec. What we were talking about a while ago, about the name of the club, weren't you worried it was going to get you teased all the time? I mean, it's like giving everybody an open shot to call you a loser, the way Kent just did. Yeah, I thought about it, Alec admitted. Then he shrugged and smiled. Um, but I'm not a loser, whatever that means. And I know I'm not. He paused for a second, then asked, so did you think about that? What kids would think about the club name and about you? She shook her head and pushed out her, her lower lip. Kids can think whatever they want about me, doesn't matter. Another pause. Then she said, did you really ask Kent to join this club? Alec then felt a sudden sharpness in his thoughts, a tightness in his chest, the way a warrior feels when he draws a sword or a lightsaber because Nina had just given him a perfect chance to take a slash at Kent. All he had to do was tell about the way Kent had butted into his conversation with Dave. The truth was, Kent would never have joined this club. He wouldn't, want, he wouldn't have wanted anybody to think he was a loser in any way, shape, or form, not even for a second. And making sure that Dave didn't join? Another example of Kent not wanting to lose at anything. But saying this stuff to Nina? It didn't seem honorable. And in the High King, his heroes were big on being honorable. So Alec put his sword away and said something else, a different truth. I invited another friend to join and Kent heard us talking. So I guess he could have joined if he wanted to, but he loves playing kickball and he's really good at it. So he wasn't interested. Didn't he know it was going to be a reading club? Alec smiled. Yeah, he figured that out. He almost started to tell her about how Kent had been the first kid to ever, who ever called him a bookworm, but he didn't want to get into all that. 
So, he doesn't like to read much, she asked. Again, Alec felt he could probably score some points against Kent, could probably make Nina think that the guy wasn't much of a reader, talk about how he mostly obsessed about sports, maybe even tell her what he'd said about joining the club. Alec made himself stop. He didn't want to talk about Kent's reading habits, didn't want to talk about Kent with Nina at all. Not now, not ever. So he shrugged and said, Kent could tell you about that better than I. She nodded. Right. Nina looked over her shoulder toward the kickball game and Alec could tell she was watching Kent and he was sure Kent knew she was watching. Alec opened his book and forced his eyes to stay on the page to move from word to word. But the desperate battle scene in front of the castle felt flat now. He couldn't stop noticing how Nina kept looking over at Kent. Not that it was any of his business. The girl was totally free to go ahead and get interested in whatever guy she wanted to. But did it have to be Kent? Alex suddenly wished that he could reach into his book and get his hands on some of the magic power Taryn was tossing around the battlefield, stuff that caused blindness. And if he'd have been able to get some, he wasn't sure if he would use the power on Nina or on his help, himself. Probably better to use it on himself. That would be more honorable. And let's pause there.